any of you has have, who has ever played a sport that involved the ball, you don't run to where the ball is. You run where to, to where the ball is going to be. And if you look back four years, three years, even two years, we never expected AI to be the absolute winner of the most challenging strategy game on earth, the game of Go, where now the champion is AlphaGo. We never expected AI to be creative and create art or music. Now it is. We always said, you know, human ingenuity is going to remain. We're going to be the creative ones. Uh, we're going to be the ones that will have connections to humans. So AI will never pass the Turing test. And there we are. The most interesting thing that is misunderstood about artificial intelligence is that if you take our normal understanding of technology development, the technology acceleration curve, which is basically stating that technology will double in its performance every 12 to 18 months at the same cost, which held true since things like Moore's law in 1967 was uh, issued and so on, AI's double exponential could be much more exponential. And as a matter of fact, the big characteristic is that it's choppy. So you would see developments that go like this, and then you wake up in 2023 and you have ChatGPT. And while ChatGPT answered Pep's questions wrong, it still passed the bar exam and got through MBAs and, you know, has an IQ of 155. Elon Musk is 155. Einstein is 160. The difference between ChatGPT 4 and ChatGPT 3.5 is 10x growth in performance. 10x. So if ChatGPT 5 is another 10x, let's say 6 is another 10x in a year's time, you're facing an IQ of 1,500. So take any complex part of physics that you never understood because the person that understand it's, understands it is just 40 IQ points ahead of you and multiply that by a 1,400 point difference to the average human. And you know what we're up against. What is AI is a question that is somehow forgotten when all of us see all of those news articles. If I gave you a problem, a complex problem, like count the number of people in this room within three and a half seconds, complex problem, and then I give you instructions for how to do it, and you follow the instructions, you're a very disciplined person. That's the way we programmed computers until the year 2000. When I programmed, I started programming when I was eight. When I programmed a computer, I solved the problem first. And then I told the machine how to do it. Because the machine had compute power that was faster than me, it could do that problem first with no errors if I programmed it correctly, and then repeatedly, very quickly, and it appeared intelligent. But it wasn't. It was a glorified slave. That was until the year 2000. And the year 2000 was the answer to all of our dreams. Someone like me couldn't believe we did it. By the year 2009, there was something that was published by Google that was known as the cat paper white paper, when we asked uh, some of our computer power to go and unpromptedly watch YouTube. We didn't tell it what to look for. We simply said, go and see if you find any trends. Eventually, the machine went back and said, I found something. And we, we asked it what that was. Actually, we couldn't understand what it was saying, so we had to write more code to see what it sees through the neural network. And it had found a cat. Of course, it's YouTube. And it didn't only find what appeared to be a cat from the side view or the front view. It found out what catness is all about. That entitled, annoying, fluffy, very sweet thing. Any cat lovers in the room? Yeah, nobody. That's amazing. This is the, my favorite country. Oh my God. Because of that, within no time at all, the machine could find every cat on YouTube. The thing here is we didn't teach it how to find the cat. We didn't even tell it what a cat was. That is intelligence. Intelligence is to give someone a problem, just like to give a child a puzzle, you know, a, a cylinder and different shapes of holes in a, in a wooden board and tell the child to find out how to pass it through the correct hole, which should be a circle. Nobody tells the child, turn the cylinder on its side, look at the cross section, match the cross section to something on the board, and then you will find out what the answer is. Right? That's old programming. Intelligent programming is to just give it a cylinder and say, try. Try and try and try and try until you get where you are today. When we did this, it was, it was known as deep learning. And the way we programmed deep learning was quite vicious. We had a, 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 um, a, a teacher bot, which was making the code, sort of improving the code, uh, a maker bot, sorry, and a teacher bot that was testing the performance of the student bot. So the student bot would be asked a question. If it had it right, the teacher will say, ah, good code. The maker will improve it. 
Or if it had a trunk, the teacher will say, bad code, so we would kill it. Literally, violently remove that code and keep improving the good ones. When in, in, in 2018, I would say, we started with reinforcement learning, which is what led us to the revolution that we have today around transformers, which was basically to allow uh, us to go back to the computer and say, what do you think this is? And it would say, it's a duck. And we would say, no, 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 it's not a duck, it's a, a cat. How can you go back and change your own algorithm so that you see it as a cat? That kind of reinforcement learning is very similar to the way we teach our children. But with that, you get a tool like ChatGPT that disrupts everything. 